example. So Sage for the educator, I'm going to talk about Sage Math which is a free software for mathematics, Jupyter, a system of notebooks that Sage can be used in, and be grader for automatic grading of notebooks, CoCalc, an online platform for science collaboration and teaching, and uh, also uh, links between Sage and LaTeX. So in particular, I will talk about Sage text, but there is also uh, Python tech and tech surgery. Okay, so... <clears throat> Let me move uh, on to CoCalc. So CoCalc is at cocalc.com. It's an online platform for science collaboration and teaching. So the name is a reference to collaborative calculation, CoCalc. And uh, in uh, CoCalc, you can um, sign in. You can create an account for free, or you can also use it without even creating an account. Once you create an account, you get uh, <clears throat> you can uh, view your list of projects. So I've been using CoCalc for a while, so I have a number of projects in CoCalc. Let me create a new one. So I'll call it days 114. Uh, create. OK, so once uh, the project is created, it's the it's uh, a CoCalc project is really a virtual machine, which uh, can start uh, in the in the cloud, and you can access it online through your web browser. Uh, you can also uh, connect to it in other ways, for example, in SSH. But for now, let's only use the online interface. Um, so it's. Just taking a while. Sorry about that. Uh, what it is happening is it's uh, trying to find some room uh, online to, to start this project. OK, so yes. And then you get a file view, which uh, initially has nothing. But um, I'm going to create. Um, so then you can create uh, various types of files in this platform. Uh, so for example, uh, one way to create files is just to type a name of a file here with the extension, like uh, days114.ipynb. And then this creates uh, a Jupyter notebook and we can uh, write some markdown, uh, sage days 114 uh, demo. Uh, and there's a, uh, let's see, I think. This plus here is to add a cell. And there is a plus and minus up there, which can help make uh, the content bigger without changing the size of the menus. So that's, I think that's, uh, that's nice. And then here, uh, if I type 2 plus 2, I think you've seen that in the previous lecture, the result of 2 plus 2 is 4. And it takes a while, because the first uh, time you evaluate a cell, it starts the Sage kernel but subsequent runs will be faster. So um, let me move back to the files view. So here the, the files button takes us back. Maybe it's not big enough. Is this bigger, big enough? OK. Yeah. No, uh, what I want to do is to create a course. So uh, the file extension for that is .course. So days 114 sage cocalc uh, dot uh, course, enter. So this creates a different type of files where I have various tabs, students, assignments, handouts, configuration, and shared project. So um, I'm going to just briefly visit the configuration uh, to say that I want 
to upgrade the projects uh, using a license key that I have here. Um, apply. And then I want to add students to my course. So I've just copied and pasted the list of participants to these Sage Days. And I hit Shift Enter. And then add all students. So now everybody is getting added as a student to this course, uh, which means that if uh, you create um, an account on CoCalc with the email address that was used here, which is the one you registered to the Sage Days for, then you will uh, now, in your list of projects, um, you will have a Days 114 uh, Sage CoCalc project with your name. So I now want to uh, create an assignment, and, uh, send it to everyone so you can work and then I can grade. So um, I will uh, create an assignment called um, days. So let, let me go back to the files view. Um, I'll put it in days in uh, homework, maybe. Uh, so if I type a slash, this creates a, a directory. So I, I can observe here the, the file system. And there's a, a home button to go back to the root folder. And then inside homework, I want to create an assignment. So for that, I go back to my course uh, file and I create an assignment. Um, maybe in homework, I create another folder homework one. Um, and make that an assignment. So back to the course file, homework one, Enter. I want to make this an assignment. Uh, and I can open it and um, how do I do that again? Um, So I open this, I make a notebook in there, um, homework onepinb And uh, in a view, I can uh, select create assignment and be grader. So this uh, adds a uh, some kind of menu for each uh, cell in my notebook. So let's do a read-only cell here, which will be the title. Homework 1, Sage Days 114. Also, I would like that to be a markdown cell. So um, Yes, so to, to uh, change the type of cell, you can either use the view menu and uh, no, no, the cell menu and decide to change it to markdown code or raw, or you can use uh, escape to move to command mode and then M for markdown, Y for code, or uh, R for raw. Okay, now let me create a um, manually graded uh, answer. So it comes with a built-in example. Uh, so when you, when you select the type, uh, it will uh, autofill it with something and then you can uh, edit that. So here it's asking to make a function which will sum things. And it's already populated with begin solution and solution. And in this block, 
there is the proposed uh, solution. So this is how I would write my sum function, return a plus b. So it takes two arguments a and b, and then the, the body of the function is to return a and b, and there's some documentation. And then um, let me uh, add a new cell. So in CoCalc, there's a way to add cells, which is to hover a, over the blue line, which is in between cells. So every time you move the cursor between cells, there's a blue line that pops in and uh, you can click it to make a new cell. Otherwise, you can use the usual uh, A for above or B for below uh, to create a new cell in Jupyter. So let's make uh, now um, an instructor-only cell. So in this cell, um, I'm it's things that will be removed from the student version. And so it's uh, to, to talk only to the other instructors who will be doing the grading. So, uh, yeah. Then uh, creating yet a few more cells, let's do an auto-graded answer. So in this case, the the field in example is to uh, make a list of squares. And then it invites you to modify the function name and parameters. I'm not going to modify it because this is just as good an example as anything. But uh, maybe let's call it list of uh, squares. And then it's asking you to compute the squares of the numbers from 1 to n. Okay, and if I wanted to do something, I would replace something else. I could replace that. And then there's again a begin solution and solution block. Uh, also, maybe I want to make it more precise. Uh, if n is less than one, this should raise a value error. Okay, and so you see that the, the code that's been proposed as a solution is that if n is less than one, you raise a value error saying n must be at least one. And otherwise you return the list of i squared for i in range from one to n plus one. So if you know uh, Python a bit and Sage is based on it, range from one to n plus one is everything from one included to n plus one excluded. So it really goes from one to n. Um, and then let's uh, try all the other types of things. So uh, we can do an auto uh, grader tests in the following cells. So this is where we will assign the credit for uh, the previous cell. So it, this one is. Uh, asking the student to, to fill in the body of a function and then to determine if the student got points for that, we make a bunch of uh, tests of how this function should behave. So for example, if uh, we do squares of one, then this should be the list consisting of just one. Squares of two should be all the squares from one to two, so it's one comma four, okay? And then we can also uh, assert uh, that some exceptions will be raised in the cases when they should. So if we ask squares of zero or squares of minus one, uh, then we should get a value error. Okay, and then we can even add some hidden tests. So in the student version, uh, the, some tests will be visible. So the students can try, can see what they are fighting. Uh, and then the, the, we can add some hidden tests because otherwise the students might decide to make a function which just passes a few selective, uh, just the tests that it needs to pass and doesn't really do what it's supposed to do. So here uh, we add a, a test that the squares up to 10 are one, four, nine, and so on up to 100. Okay. Um, some more uh, 
Then we, there's some multiple choice questions. So we can ask what's the answer to life, the universe, and everything, which is a reference to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, where the answer is supposed to be 42. So, and then, um, so that's the question. That's how the student is supposed to answer. There's a pre-filled answer. Answer seven equals an empty string. And then, um, The, in the next uh, cell, the student, uh, the student's answer will be tested. So the visible test is that the answer will be one of A, B, and C. So uh, which are the, the numbers for the for the, the possible answers. And then the hidden test will be that the answer is really B. So now let's see how this is transformed to a student version. So there's this button here, generate student version. Um, okay, so in this student version, uh, the read-only block is still here. The manually graded answer has this. Uh, so the begin solution and solution block was replaced by a your code here uh, indication. And then it's pre-filled with raise not implemented. Uh, and the student has to replace that with their implementation of this function. Uh, same for list of squares, the begin solution and solution block disappeared. And then the, the tests are uh, here, at least the visible tests and the hidden tests are not shown. And same for the multiple choice question. So now I want to uh, send the homework to everyone and then you can work on it and I will collect and grade. Um, okay, so let's do that. Um, I'm closing this uh, view here and back to the course. I will, so if I unroll the, this piece of homework, I can see all the possible students that I can assign it to. So let me assign to everyone. Go. And then, uh, so it copies the files to each uh, student project associated to this course. And when your turn has come, then you, you have this uh, in your project. It might, uh, you might need to refresh the file view to see uh, the files that you have been sent. So it's doing them. So maybe one thing that makes this a little slow is that it needs to start each student project to copy the file to it. Uh, and I could have made this a little faster if I had thought. Um, in the configuration tab for the course on CoCalc, you can uh, um, start all the student projects uh, so that they will be uh, ready to copy things to and also ready for the students to, to play with. Uh, so that saves a little time if you think to do that before you uh, send assignments. Okay. So then I could um, look at who's the, so you, the, the, the the student uh, projects associated to this course 
are owned by the person who is giving the course and the students are added as collaborators. So they, they cannot de completely destroy the project. They can do anything inside the project, but not remove it. Um, so if somebody volunteers, I can uh, send, let me also maybe, I don't know if she was added to this. I'm gonna add one more student. Uh, who is the speaker for tomorrow. So, Alba, uh, at student. And so you can always filter in the student tab, you can filter the list to show someone and then you can check if they have been assigned the homework. So Alba has not, so I can assign this. And um, in the assignment view, you can also uh, filter by assignment and then filter by student. And so Alba accepted that I could uh, show her doing the homework in real time. So I am now connected to Alba's project for this course. And uh, in the homework number one, so we can see if Alba is trying to complete the homework. Yes, so you see it's a bit like in Google Docs. Uh, you can see the cursor of a different person typing when you are, uh, when several people are connected to the same document. So the full A plus B is there. Then a value error is raised if N is too small. And then if uh, n is at least one, the squares for a range of values are added. Good. Okay, and then there's tests. Then there's the multiple choice answer. What would be the answer to life, the universe, and everything? So Alba picked answer B, which means 42. And um, now the, she started the, the notebook and ran all the cells. Okay, so I'm gonna close that view, close the project and I'm back in my, uh, teacher project, and there I'm going to uh, collect and to run MB Grader. So there's a button here, run MB Grader. So it's telling me uh, that MB Grader gave two out of three uh, points. Um, and if you remember one of the, um, so I can open the Abbas uh, homework sheet here. That's the collected uh, version and I can, sorry, in the course here, uh, see the auto graded one. Uh, and since there is a manually graded answer here where I'm supposed to uh, decide by hand if this was uh, the good thing to do and it's worth one point, I need to adjust that score here and put the score myself. Okay, 
So now the score is three out of three. Okay, so uh, good work. We can uh, write uh, some uh, some comments for the students and uh, return the graded work to the student. Good. So now if I visit uh, the student project again, here, um, let's see. I thought there would be um, something about the graded version. I'm not sure what is uh, going on. Oh, the return part has not been done. So, uh, return. Okay, sorry. So I I had not clicked return. Contrary to what I thought. So now, if I visit Alba's, uh, oh, I and then I can open the the returned work. So, in homework. In Alba's project, there is no homework one and graded homework one, which is the version where uh, there's the, the markdown document with the grade, which says your grade is this, the instructor comments are good work. And then there's the comments that this was graded with MD grader and possibly uh, the instructor adjusted some part of the grade. And then there's a detail of the grade for each question that had score. Okay. Good. Um, so that's what I wanted to show about uh, using ND Grader. So ND Grader can be used in CoCalc. It can also be used outside CoCalc. Uh, there's a bit more setup to do, uh, and uh, but it's all documented. So if you uh, look for ND Grader in your favorite search engine, you will uh, land on the documentation. Uh, and it, it just uh, runs through examples. So the ND Grader was created by uh, Jessica Hamrick. So she's giving this lecture about using uh, ND Grader. And uh, in CoCalc, so there's a, they have their own implementation of ND Grader, which aims to stay compatible with the uh, non CoCalc version. But uh, the benefit is that it's all ready to work and you don't have to worry much about setup. Okay, so now I would like uh, to um, cover uh, SageTech briefly. So uh, Sage Tech is a way to include uh, Sage code in uh, tech documents. Uh, and in the same way that you can have, uh, when you compile a, a, a tech document or LaTeX document, then uh, if you are using uh, some special environments such that for a bibliography, uh, then you can run uh, an extra pass of some engine to make the bibliography uh, work well, and then run uh, LaTeX again. So uh, Sage Tech works the same way. There are some Sage blocks in your document. When you run LaTeX, it, it, it does something with this and prepares some extra files for Sage to run on. Then you run Sage on those files, and then you LaTeX again, and it takes into account the result. So let's show uh, how this works. So I'm going to uh, visit uh, SageTech's, uh, the SageTech page. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, just maybe search it and find the documentation. So we find three main pages. One is uh, the Sage documentation about using Sage text. Uh, one is uh, Sage text on the Python uh, package index. And then one is the code repository for Sage text. So, um, <clears throat> for example, here you have, there's this example.tech uh, file here. So let me uh, check the raw view for that file. And I'm going to copy and paste it uh, into CoCalc. So uh, back into uh, days 114, let me close this uh, homework problem that we had. Uh, and I'm going to go back into this course file. And in the configuration file, I'm going to set up um, a shared project for the course. Uh, see? Maybe let's do that later. I'm just going to demo using Sage Text here. So let's uh, create a folder for that, Sage Text folder. And in there, I create a Sage Tech example file. So it's something.tech. Okay, so in CoCalc, when you create a tech file, it's pre-filled with some templates. I'm gonna remove all that and paste the example from Sage Tech and then tell it to uh, build. So it's, it's running, uh, it's actually going to run, it, it says here that the, the engine that is used to process Sage file is to uh, use LaTeX MK and then, uh, that work at all? So LaTeX is running. And there's just some undefined uh, references. So let me do another pass of LaTeX. But you can see that most of the document has been processed. So it says examples of embedding Sage in LaTeX with Sage Tech. Uh, this was authored by Dan Drakes and it's now maintained by other people. And uh, on, on the Sage, uh, on the tech side, you can see that this is an example two plus two equal backslash Sage. Uh, two plus two. So this is asking Sage to compute two plus two. And in the uh, on the PDF side, you can uh, let me make this bigger. you can see that the example becomes two plus two equals four, okay? And then you can mix also uh, some uh, tech macros, for example, to get uh, the year that we are in, which is 2022. And then you can do Sage. You can use Sage to mod uh, the current year modulo 100, and this gives 22. So here you get 
if you raise the Cartier mod 100, which equals 22, so this is this part, Sage mod the year 100, to the power of the current day, slash the slash day in, uh, in LaTeX is a way to obtain the current day, uh, which is 25, so because we're the 25th of July. And then you get this, which is uh, 22 to the 25. Okay. And then you... Uh, so, yeah. In, uh, in Python uh, or in Sage, a percent operator is uh, for 42. So you would think that you would write percent 42. But since in uh, LaTeX, uh, percent is for comments. You need to escape it and write percent like this. So percent uh, is for modulo. And then there's a lot more things you can do. So you can add a sage block, which will be uh, typeset and executed. Um, so in this case, in the sage block, you have uh, one plus one. Uh, var ABC, you define a system of three equations and you solve them for A, B, and C. And then in the next uh, block, uh, we write again that uh, equation is this system of equations and then uh, display the, so the backslash, uh, Bracket is like double dollar, so it's displayed math. And then uh, backslash sage, S bracket zero. So S is the list of solutions of, of this equation in A, B, and C. So we can display the first solution with S bracket zero and the second one with S bracket one. So we can see here uh, one solution is A equals minus one quarter I root 79 plus 11 over 4, and B is something else, and C is something else, and then there's a second solution, which is this. Um, and then, um, the, the example, so the, this example uh, worksheet is the whole uh, documentation, uh, is, is like most of the documentation of uh, Sage Tech, and it shows you a lot more things you can do. You can do try except blocks. You can uh, plot. So uh, this is the section plotting. Um, so if you double click somewhere on the on the view, it synchronizes you to the corresponding location in the tech on the on the side. And uh, here there is a Sage plot. E, so E was defined as uh, an elliptic curve a bit further up. And then if you do E dot plot minus three, three, it does the, it gives you a plot, right? So it's a, it's a bit too big and it's uh, sticking out in the margin here. So if we wanted, we could uh, wrap this into, uh, and this uh, exclamation mark here reminds you that there is some, uh, some badness. Uh, we can uh, resize it uh, with some kind of like a maybe scale box. And run this again. Okay, I guess. It's probably time to, to finish soon. So I would like to ask if there are any uh, questions on using either uh, NVGrader uh, with Sage or uh, Sage Tech. We haven't. Uh... Yeah, uh, can you hear us? Yes. Okay, great. So, uh, yeah, are, are there any questions? Uh, I have several, but maybe I'll let others have a go first. Okay, so um, 
I was just uh, uh, playing with it and uh, I wanted to just uh, do a really minimal example uh, with Sage Tech. So what yes. I'm going to do is I'm going to try uh, to share screen. Yes. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, if you can stop sharing your screen. Oh, yes, sure. Yeah. So. Um, let me just uh, share my. I mean, so uh, should something like this uh, work? Because uh, all I see are two question marks when I run this. Oh yes. So um, what it will do? Is, so how is your file called? Uh, Sage Tech Test. Okay. <coughs> So next to this file, there should now be an example uh, .sage file, oh, uh, which okay. is called. Uh, can you can you uh, show the uh, the the file view? Yeah. So yeah. So now there is a sage text test .sage text .sage. This one. Okay. Oh. Okay. Yes. So you need to run sage on that. Oh, okay. okay. In Cocal, that happens automatically because their, uh, okay, their okay. engine detects that Sage Tech is being used and then it runs Sage. Okay, so that I. File. So you need to run so Sage space that file. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay, so I'll try that maybe. Yeah, uh, so it, it requires uh, Sage to be installed. And yeah. Then you need to run Sage on that. And uh, but you yeah, can uh, okay. So now I take run this again, and uh, yeah, and then you let take it once more. I uh, got it, yeah. Okay, that's good. Um, great, I think now it should be running. I find it very nice because when you uh make a, a problem sheet and you want to include the graph of a function or a solution sheet, it's really uh, helpful to be able to just use Sage to put your figures and then have them right in. So what yeah. I do is usually I work with the Sage separately in a notebook and then I copy paste in the Sage tech because it's, it's not very flexible to always have to recompile the whole Sage uh, right. the tech file and run Sage and so on. So you might want to um, play with your bits of Sage in a notebook and then paste them in the tech when they are ready. So here's my four, two plus two is four. So uh, that seems to have worked. Okay. So uh, there's another question I wanted to ask you. Um, uh, so maybe, sorry about that. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so maybe we can also get some, um, uh, help with uh, installing a uh, CoCalc server, right? I mean, we can do it right here and then we don't have the problems with slow. Um, uh, for yes, so uh, CoCalc is uh, developed as free software, so you can install your own CoCalc server. Uh, for that, you there is a, something called CoCalc Docker. Okay. And then uh, it's uh, some work to install it. And otherwise, there is Cocal, at cocal.com, you, you use the pre-installed version, which has which is a lot more complete. So they they make public most of Cocal, but not the, the part that scales really to uh, millions of users. And also the recipe. So they the one the the one the official Cocal at cocal.com has uh, terabytes of, of software <laughs> installed. I don't know, maybe that's, uh, that's too much terabytes, but like there's really a lot of uh, software installed. If you use Cocal Docker, there is a minimal amount of uh, mostly everything you need to, to get by. Stage comes in with it, but uh, if you want more specialized software, you need to tweak uh, your Cocal Docker install to, to make it more complete for your needs. Yeah, okay, so um, let's see, maybe there are more questions now. We have one from Dr. Ajit Kumar. Hi, Samuel, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah, so uh, uh, I, I was running Sage Tech uh, 
again in this uh, separately, not in uh, CoCalc. Earlier, I had found this uh, plotting 3D was a problem. So, but then uh, in CoCalc, I, I ran and it, it worked. So, is it still a problem when you do it uh, separately in LaTeX or uh, it is now rectified? Um, so, you had problems using uh, 3D printing but in SageTex? Yeah, 3D plotting. Oh, 3D plotting, yes. Um, I don't know, it might depend on the version of Sage that you are using uh, or your OS. Are you using Windows? No, I, I, I uh, generally use Linux. You're in Linux, okay. Yeah. Um, and 3D printing works for you outside of Sage no. text? It, it, it worked through CoCalc. Yes. But uh, I had problem, it was not working if I directly use uh, Sage Tech and uh, LaTeX. Okay, what about if you use Sage but not Sage Tech? Just no, no, uh, see, the, the Sage will work. The okay. other coding has entered, there's no problem. I don't know, I would need to have a look. Maybe during the coding session, uh, I can try to. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Sure, I like. I can show you my my uh, LaTeX file. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Any more questions? Uh, if some of you plan to use Sage to teach coding or mathematics, uh, I think you know you should all try it at least. Uh, and we'll try to set up a CoCalc server on campus here, so uh, at least those of you who are here can do that. Um. So, uh, no more questions here. Okay, so so then let's thank Samuel. Uh, thank you for your attention. And uh, we now have uh, go for uh, high tea, right? And uh, there we can also further discuss um, um, the things that we have learned. I wish you could have joined us, but I hope to see you uh, next week, maybe. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, that's great. Thanks for the talk and see you next week. Thank you. See you soon. Bye.